What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. That's me, the one true other host of this show, of this show which can only be described as the number one podcast in Roanoke, Virginia, if not maybe in some other places. Maybe the other Roanokes of the world as well. Probably the number one podcast in all Roanokes. You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm just going to assume it's true. I'm going to assume uh, it's true as well. It has surprised me that in all, because we're, we're, uh, we're, we're vocal about being Roanokers. Yeah. You know, of, of the town of Roanoke. We talk about it a little bit. It's it is known. Up. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like a little bit of like a show trope. Um, it is surprising to me that no one who watches has never written in and been like, oh my God, I live in Roanoke, Washington. You know, oh, yeah, or right. Like, like <laughs> Roanoke, South Carolina. You know, if, like I totally thought you meant here. If you were a listener from an other Roanoke, please let us know. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, that would be that'd way be cool. Neat. There's like, isn't there like a lost colony of Roanoke or something? There is, and it's like one of those things that you would think being from somewhere called Roanoke that yeah. it would be like a story that I feel like I know better but to the best of my knowledge it's like a group of explorers landed on the small island and they like wrote they like carved into the tree that they had been there and then they were just like gone and like that's oh. that's as, like as much as I know it's just that like it was like what happened to them I don't know and I don't know either. Maybe hmm. we should do some research yeah. into the lost colony of Roanoke. Maybe we should. But are we named after that Roanoke? I don't or? think so. I don't even know where does the name Roanoke even come from. I think it is an indigenous American word. Okay. Like Roanoke. Um, I know that before we were also called like Big Lick or something for a while, or that's like the city's nickname. Yes. <laughs> Once upon a time. So yeah, if you come to Roanoke, everything is named either Star City, Blue Ridge, or Big Lick. Yeah. That's like the name of, of like every single event you go everything. to. The Blue Ridge Outdoor Festival. Yep. Or like the Big Lick Comic Con. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Every single one of them. Right. I actually ran into the guy who puts on uh the Big Lick Comic Con literally when I came back from lunch today. What? No yeah. way, because that's so funny because we were talking about him this very morning i know that's exactly what i told him too i was like hey you we just did we were talking about you and which actually brings us very nicely into our our first conversation topic of the day which is that last week you and i put on our very first ever like live performance if you will yes we sure did (laughs) this was like the hardest thing if you will (laughs) if you will okay so this is like i don't know why i struggled with trying to explain to people what it was we were doing because it was almost like it was like saying like yeah we've got a gig sort of it's like i mean we do that is what we're doing this mm-hmm. is where we're like people are coming to to see us but there's also someone else there maybe more people are coming to see them and are coming to see us but like some are still coming to see us and we will be on stage but like we don't really have like an act so <laughs> um but they don't really have an act either i know you but know? like you know i feel like everybody because we traveled down to orlando for this and like in the process of doing so you just run into a variety of you know different people are like oh like we'll bring you to town or whatever and it's like oh we're doing a we're doing a thing it's like oh you're in a band and it's like no No. what do you do well so anyway (laughs) we were part of the roost tour being put on uh by rooster teeth the greater podcast network which we're not which popcorn culture itself is not actually a part of but which the main channel super carlin brothers is yes uh sort of to an extent to an extent yeah uh, but the, we yeah partnership collaboration partnership is probably the better word like we don't exist underneath the rooster teeth umbrella in any capacity right uh, yes. or anything but um so the podcast version of the super carlin brothers show which is just the audio from each show uploaded to um, like a podcast player. Yeah, you can, I mean, you, wherever pods are cast. Wherever pods are cast, you can just listen to the audio of Super Carlin Brothers, the channel um, on, on your podcast player. And so that's technically the podcast associated with them. So like we were there for a podcast store, but for the podcast version of our very non-podcast show, I despite know. having our own pod. I think like I got very lost in the weeds on that. People are like, yeah, what are you guys doing? It's like, well... 
Let me explain to you everything I just said. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> just like like, <laughs> I don't, like like you don't actually care. Like all all I had to say is like, yeah, me and Ben are just putting on like a live podcast. Like <laughs> I, no, I know. know. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's like what was funny about it was um like. Because if you were to go to a brewery or like a bar or something, it's like it's not uncommon for places like that to just have like a trivia night once a week. Right. Every week. (laughs) Yeah. And so it's like but that really is ultimately what we did was we went down and we had like a live in-person version of like the uh, interactive Kahoot trivia streams that we do on the Super Carlin Brothers channel. Yes. But so even that, though, it was almost like like people it's like, yeah, we're down here for like a trivia night. We're hosting it. It's it's like not a lot bigger than it sounds, but it's not it's not as small as it sounds right. either. It, that like, was, yeah. <laughs> it's like if you were just yeah, because if you say like, oh yeah, we're going to a, like trivia night, we're going out to trivia night. It sounds like you're going to a bar or a restaurant or a restaurant where someone is going to be yeah playing trivia. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a very yeah. common thing to go do. It's very fun or whatever. But so it's like yeah, what are you guys doing? Like yeah, we're hosting a trivia show. It's like. Like, uh, like you just flew to Orlando to like host a trivia night at a bar. It's like, not at all. Not at all that. No, <laughs> exactly. No, nope. this, this is, I feel like I've been struggling. I I'm know. so glad we're complaining about <laughs> it the way that we are, because I have been having such a hard time trying to tell people what it is that we're, that we're doing. And in the, the honest thing is that like, they're asking, I feel like somewhat out of like formalities, niceties, like whatever. Yeah. And it's like before long, I'm like, I've already used too many words. I know. I, like, I can it's see like, that you're glazed over. It's like when like, someone's like, how, how, how's it going? How, how, how's your morning? And you just go like way too into it. <laughs> just like, I was really just saying good morning, man. You know, I don't really care. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. It all started. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing is like, I knew exactly what we were doing. And like, to me, it's like, you know, it's definitely not just trivia night. Like it's a genuine performance. It's like, it's going to be like on stage. There's going to be prizes. There's going to be like big production on it. And it's just hard to describe it in a way that didn't just sound like trivia night. Like, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, but anyway, it was, it was, it was a very interesting experience to go down and do it because like, obviously we, we have a fair bit, uh, like through the early days of the pandemic, we were doing these like trivia streams, uh, for a while, like every other Friday frequently, you yeah. know? So it was like, it was something we were in like a good solid rhythm of doing. We've done it so many times that like, we sort of have like little, isms you know as people meet the, the leaderboard and we can tell like fun facts about like a specific question or character like in between what people are answering and stuff so there's there's plenty for us to do but i was very curious about what it would ultimately look like once we got down there on stage because yeah. that was the other big thing is that like while we were the talent of the event we were not like the ones who had coordinated with the like the the, the site. venue or anything yeah right so like we you know we knew they were like yeah like you'll have a screen that you can like you know put put stuff on or whatever and so in my head i'm almost imagining like giving a PowerPoint I know. In, in like <laughs> high school where it's just going to be like, it's like a stage that maybe like the local high school might perform on and they'll have like a big, you know, screen up behind you and like maybe like a, like a couch in the middle that we could like sit on with microphones. Like in my head, that's what I'm imagining. And then we walk into the Vanguard in Orlando, which is just like, there are probably no joke, easily 100 directional lights inside yeah. of the space that like can, you know, that can go any which way. They're like multicolored. There's like three huge screens. There's like a massive kind of like, if you've ever been to like a comic con event and like, you've seen like a, like a, a group of actors come out and like give a panel. There's like a huge table in the middle of the stage. It's just like, it was, I was like, Whoa, this yeah. is, this is so much bigger it than I like, knew what was going to be. Know, here. Like, I had no idea how to like picture what the event was going to look like. And yeah, the fact that there was, like four giant LED screens on stage at this big table. I was like, oh, this is awesome. It yeah, was I, it was so cool. I think, yeah, in my mind, I was like, we're going to have like a screen with like a projector on it and we'll just sort of be standing next to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it, was so, it was not that. It was way cooler than that. It reminded me just a tiny bit. Have you seen the meme where it's like the guy sitting at the folding table and he? it's usually like he's got like some type of like strong opinion. Yeah. And it's like, you know, argue with me, prove me wrong or whatever. Right. It's I was sort of imagining something like, Along those lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so all that being said, we're walking into this event to do this thing with um, 
not like complete unknowns because like we know we know like what we're doing but we don't know like what the landing spot's gonna look like we haven't met the guys from like annual pass which is the podcast we were performing with uh so there, there were some unknowns but all, all things considered i feel like we got down there everything went extremely smoothly the the crowd was super fun to interact with the other guys were like so interesting so nice uh and they had just like so much depth like kind of like we do with fandoms to like amusement parks the thing that i never could have predicted about how the event was going to go is that the venue was freezing yes in so it's in orlando florida and this is like it's odd because like i i, I have to imagine I don't even know how many, like how often the circumstance would present itself, but it's like, it was like 60 degrees inside of the building, which like over a long enough period of time, 60 degrees is like oddly brisk is like, yeah, it's pretty cold. Yeah. There's no doubt. So like, I think the biggest thing, like, you know, I got down there. I wasn't nervous. I was excited. It was going to be so cool. Like people were coming in, like all the stuff is coming together. And then I'm up on stage and I'm like, I am physically like shaking Same. with shivers. Yes. Um, I, yeah. We got up there. Cause so the way the event worked, like first there was like a VIP, um, like Q and a where us and annual pass were all on stage together, just answering questions. To anyone who bought a VIP ticket. Yeah. And this is like the very first thing we're doing. We've only met the annual pass guys like three minutes ago. Right. Like they just got there and got settled and they're like, Hey guys, what's up? You ready to go do this? And we're like, absolutely. Let's go. And like, uh, again, it's like the, our first, like performance thing ever and i'm on stage and i'm like shaking i'm like i'm not nervous like this is not i like felt like people were going to be looking at me like oh my god he's freaking out up there right like, no, yeah. i am not nervous i am freezing so, <laughs> so cold yeah. this is like I, I i don't even know if this is true but i feel like once upon a time somebody told me the fun fact that you can't yawn if you were like like public speaking like apparently for whatever reason it's like your brain is like firing too much oh interesting to yawn okay and so like i maybe that's not even true but like i also would have thought that like once you go out there like once the lights are on like once the moment is like you know under effect it's like you're you're gonna, like everything else is just gonna fade away and you're just yeah. gonna be like focused on what you're doing and you're gonna be like interacting and it's gonna be awesome and it was like nope i was like i was aware of the cold the whole time yeah I will say I, the exact same experience. I was thinking because backstage it was very cold. And I was like, you know what? Out there, it won't be that bad because there's a lot of people out there. They're generating body heat. It's going to fill the room. Mm -hmm. And we'll also just be on stage and that'll just take over. And no, I was uh, completely aware of the cold the entire time. Strangest thing. <laughs> However, when it was like our turn to just like solo, like do our like our performance with the with the um, with the trivia, I will say that the um, like the performance aspect of it kicked in, and I did not notice the temperature for the entirety of like our uh, act. I our, guess our set, our set. Yeah, you know, nice, yeah. nice. Um, no, I think I I did. I re I, okay. I was definitely aware, <laughs> you of, were it. So aware of it. If oh, you no. if you ever come see us perform live, and I'm like wearing like a beanie and a scarf and mittens and like yeah. you know like a full blown ski onesie, you're just like no, I don't worry. It's, I'm just I don't want to be cold. That's I don't want. That's it. That's I'm just that's like it. you look like you're like you're sweating too much. I'm like well, you know, yeah, you can never be too careful. Yeah. Well, this was the uh, like I ended up like I'm glad I ended up wearing like pants to the event. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad was, you wore pants. Yeah, I'm too. glad I was wearing pants. I was, I almost wore shorts because like it was really hot outside because no, it was Florida. Florida. <laughs> yeah, and there was a chance we were going to have to like walk to the venue because we we're only like a block away. Um, yeah, but oh yeah, that's yeah. that's the other thing. Yeah, is that we're literally like you could almost throw a rock from the front of our hotel and hit the building that we were performing in. Yeah, but it was just far enough. That it was like, if we walk over there with our stuff, like all of our like gear and the prizes for the event and stuff, like I'm going to get there. I'm going to be just drenched in sweat. Oh, yeah. And it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we were very close. And oh, yeah, basically like across the street down a block. 
but by street I mean like eight lanes of highway or something. Yeah, right, you right, know? right. Like, yeah, yeah. like it wasn't like just crossing the road. It was like this is going to be an endeavor to cross this particular bit of traffic. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah, so we avoided that. But so I mean it this trip ended up being interesting for a multitude of reasons, not the yeah. least of which was the was the fact that the venue itself was just so cold that apparently Florida is now like associated with chilliness in my mind. <laughs> um but so it wasn't the last time I was cold on that trip. I know, yeah. yeah. It was weird. But um, so, yeah, so we have this like weird situation where we're very close to the venue and we still need to get like an Uber. But I think one of the things that happened and this had not occurred to me because I haven't really used Uber in the past like two and a half years. Yeah. But we were so close to the venue that I don't think that any Uber drivers wanted to take a like three tenths of a mile drive right you know because it was like it was like like it's just not worth my time to like like you know it, it, i'm further from them than their entire trip will be right so like we're trying to get like the uber just to get over there that takes like 20 minutes yeah just so, to get the driver for we waited longer for the driver than the length of the drive oh by yeah by like yeah. a like a multiplier of like six yeah it was like it took way longer um but anyway so we, we did finally we got to the venue and everything went well and everything uh although that's not the end of our 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 strange uber endeavors oh perhaps we could loop back to that right <laughs> but, yeah okay oh okay. man did we have the worst uber ride of my life later in this trip but we'll come back to we'll it. come back to it i i was like scared I'm like i mean legitimately i was i was like i was like something has happened uh, oh like, for sure <laughs> I, was, I mean i'm sure something did happen i don't think the thing whatever we'll come back to it okay okay we'll come back to it. because the next day that we had on this trip yeah was we were as, because we were down there with the podcast annual pass they were able to hook us up with tickets to universal yeah they had some connections with the park go figure i know i know yeah Kind of a kind of a nice fit there, yeah. Uh, which was exciting because it meant that like you know we had one day where we had to go and like work and do the performance and everything, and then the next day we basically got to up, get up and just go straight to the park. Yeah, that was that was really exciting, and like our flight home wasn't until like seven thirty. So we had pretty much uh, a full day. You know, we had to leave like a little bit early to get to the airport and stuff. Um, we had this one tricky situation where because we were. Um, we had to check out of our hotel that morning and weren't and we're going straight from the park to the airport like what do we do with our luggage and this was a weird thing like for whatever reason just this is just like the sunflower thing last week it was like oh right just yeah. go, like I tried several versions of asking this question on Google like where do I put my luggage if I need to leave if I'm going to the airport later that day right at and it's Universal. like every single answer just immediately assumes that you are staying on property right at universal and it's like oh just go to your universal like uh resort right and they will hold it for you until you leave later on that day and it's like i'm aware hotels do this yeah what happens if i'm not staying like with universal right yeah if i'm saying it and uh, so the yeah and it's just uh, like the best i could find was like a, a q a thread like a Quora thing. Oh, which right, I, yeah. Whenever I find that is the solution, I'm always like, I can't trust this that <laughs> I, much. I, I give it a 60% I trust give it, rate. Yeah, I give yeah. it about a 60% trust rate. And sure enough, like the the answers are like, people just sort of have answers, but they're kind of flimsy. And then I'm like looking at the dates and it's like 2017. Yes. And I'm like, this there's just no way this isn't a literal everyday problem at universal right like like this this has to be why isn't it in the faqs and like i am i'm towing that line between like i bet i can call like guest services or something and figure this out but then i'll be in a situation where i'm on the phone with like an automated thing and i'm gonna like it i i know how that phone call is gonna go and it's going to be long and arduous to get to the answer I want. And even then it might not be satisfactory. <laughs> Do you think that there are companies out there that have included the automated like voicemail, you know, directory service? Because sometimes I feel like you will go through like 17 menus. You know, it's like, thank you for calling Universal Studios. Yeah. Press one if you're doing this. Press two if you're doing this. Press three if what, and, you know. So you press three and then it gives you like another 10 options. And then you press seven and then it gives you like yeah. another six options. <clears throat> yeah. And it's like, I feel like it. I, I can't tell how tactical 
this is like a decision that the company makes from like the <coughs> like the corporate standpoint. They're like, we're it's costing us a ton of money in customer service. So let's I mean, for one, if you can automate some things and just have like park hours listed, it's like, okay, well that answered the person's question. Um, but the other is almost like, what if we can get them to like not make it to the end of like the directory? Oh, I mean, for sure. They want to avoid like people actually having to talk to someone and just get the answer from the system. Yeah. So, but I mean, that's, it's like, I'm, I am curious what the like calculated data decision is where it's like, okay, prior to the service, you know, we had 7,000 phone calls a day after the service, about 1200, make it through. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, like make it through all the, all the little stuff. And I don't think it's because people are getting their answers questioned ha, questions answered uh in the process of these directories i just think people are giving up they're just like <laughs> abandoning abandoning the quest it can be difficult to navigate and sure enough like a part of me is like i just if someone just answered the phone immediately i'd be done right and i think that's what everyone thinks and that's why it's so frustrating because you have to like listen through all of it and part of me is it, like e- sometimes even if i get the correct answer from the automated service part of me is just like man i'm, I'm upset that that worked i know i know <laughs> i need like a you know how there's like couch to 5k like training yeah. programs for running i need like a couch to customer service training program right you know it's like how can i how can i do this like i need to get off the couch I need to be talking to customer service. Mm-hmm. I need to be getting healthier in the process and getting answers to my questions. Exactly. Because want, this, this is a, yeah, a, I, a race. I will say that I, cause I, I went to the universal website and there was there, I could not find the answer to this question. And I finally called guest services and sure enough, I'm going through the menus and there's like one, it's like press six for frequently asked questions. And I'm like, I'm going to have to listen to like 20 frequently asked questions just to see if my question is a frequently asked question. Yep. And if it is, maybe I'll have an answer and maybe it won't even be one of them. And I'll have listened to 20 questions for nothing. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I press six. Worst nightmare. <laughs> I press six to get the frequently asked questions and it just runs me down the exact menu. I just listened to it. And then it's like, press six for this. And I was like, I definitely just asked you for this. So I pressed it like three times and eventually I was just like, okay, give, give me a person to talk to. And I will say, I talked to someone at guest services and she sounded like she got this question all the time. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. She was just like, yep, this is exactly where you go. It's going to be in this exact spot. The answer, in case you're wondering, is you just bring your stuff to lost and found and they'll just hold it for you because this is a secondary service that they offer, which is not what you might expect from the title lost and found. I know it's really funny though, because it, 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 like, once I heard that that was the solution to this problem, I was like, it just makes sense. Yeah. Like it just makes sense because right. effectively what you could be doing is, Hey, I was just walking in and I found these two bags sitting over there. Um, let me drop them off in case somebody finds them. Yeah. And then you come back at the end of the day and you're like, Hey, I lost my bag earlier. Is there any chance somebody dropped it off? And it's like, right. you know, it's like, <clears throat> Oh, I see. Oh, I see. yeah. You hacked and, the system. But it's but, like you're not actually hacking it. They just have a will hold your bag service. For free. For free. Which was very exciting. It yeah. was like, and, and Pamela, who who helped us, yes. was so nice. Very helpful. I like to think that Pamela works at all of them. Yeah, at well, all of the Universal Studios, Lost and Founds. You know, every single every single unit in every single location. Right. The world over. Boom. So, so Pamela, how to Pamela for us. Yes, Pamela's got your back. Um, but yeah, so anyway, we got there. We were the only people that I saw hard stop that had suitcases yeah and it was like one of those things where you almost felt like like drastically <coughs> over or underdressed for something and you're mm-hmm. like mm, this is i don't know why how come no one else has things right you know everyone just else was prepared a little better i suppose now obviously the other solution is we could have just left our bags at our hotel the problem with that was that our hotel was the exact opposite direction from the airport in relationship to the park yes meaning that we would have had to backtrack to the hotel thus doubly cutting into the time uh we could spend at the park exactly so we're we trying can... to avoid that at all costs exactly <clears throat> exactly so the other interesting thing about it though is that because we had uh our, like part of the tickets that uh annual pass was able to give us were with the express lanes yeah and i was so excited about this because i was like oh my gosh it was like i i just went to universal earlier this year with my wife alice addison and my mother-in-law and while we were there it was very much like a let's go explore the wizarding world more than anything else. Like, let's just go be there. Right. But like, I don't think that like Allie was sort of having like some vertigo stuff going on at that point in time. Uh, and so she was sort of like not super 
in like the the ride going mood and right. and if she wasn't going to do it, then I was like, well, I, you know, I'd rather not as well. So you know, like solidarity, right? Um, so there was a bunch of stuff. I was like, oh, this would be so awesome. Uh, like we'll get to go and just like ride all the things. All the things. We'll have the express pass, so we'll just go. Yeah, and what ended up being very interesting about this is. For, well, I guess for one, we discovered that it doesn't work on, I guess, Velocicoaster, which Velocicoaster. is like Coaster. super big ride, and Hagrid's... Uh, yeah, Motorbike Adventure. Yes, that's yes. the one. These are the two rides that your Express Pass, they don't have Express Lanes for yet, because they're so new and so popular, I guess... It, they decided I, it's not available. Right. <coughs> is the reason, which is a bummer because, of course, those are obviously the two we wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, naturally. Yeah. Naturally. Um, but either way, so like as we're working our way through the park, we're just like riding stuff as, as we go. One thing that starts happening is that we end up in the last row of every roller coaster the whole day. The, this was unbelievable yes. to me. Like we were in the last row of the Hulk ride. We ended up in the last row of of Kong. Velocicoaster, the last row of Kong, the last row of Hagrid's. Like, yes. Like, we, it, I could not believe every single time, but every ride, we're in the back row. And I will say, there are certain rides where being in the back seat is the most advantageous because because you're in the back, you get like whipped the hardest for the corners and stuff. So there is some advantages to that, but man, I could, I just couldn't believe it. Uh, to me, it's always the most fun to be in the very front row. Well, I know, and I, I was going to say the same thing, but like I know specifically, I think at Disney World, the Seven Dwarves Mine Train. Oh, for sure. That's one where I think like the, the train is long enough and the... Um, like the downhills are probably not even as long as the train itself. Right. And so if you're in the front row, then like it will like kind of tip over and you'll still be like, still be going slow because the back of the train is still like coming over the hill. Yeah. And that is always one where I feel like you lose a lot of that forward momentum because for sure you're literally waiting on your butt to get over the hill. Yeah. So if you're going on seven cars, mine train, Aim for the back, if at all possible. It is definitely the better experience. So who knows? Maybe in some of these cases we were getting a better experience because uh, they, they, they are whipping you around some corners on some of these rides. They absolutely are. Yeah. They absolutely are. Um, that being said, though, one of the other very interesting things that happened to us, despite being on the you know back row of every single ride of the day, was when we finally did get on Hagrid's after a 90-minute wait. Oh, which yeah. I longest wait of the day. Longest wait of the day. I, I feel like some people have said like that that is even like pretty tame, all things considered, sure. for, for length of, of wait. But we finally get on. And like we're we're going through the ride in the back row, and you know everything's great, and we like pull into the Forbidden Forest, which if you've ever ri- ridden the ride before, there's one point where it like drives backwards, and you go through the Forbidden Forest. In which case, we were sort of in the front row, I, yeah, but facing backwards, but facing backwards. So <laughs> yeah. ca- count that as you will. Yeah. Uh, when the ride breaks, ugh, this was so so lame, so lame. Yeah, I've this has never happened to me before. We were yeah, we were on the ride. It backs into the Forbidden Forest and then yeah, we come to a stop and you know, Hagrid's on like the, you know, you can hear him on the loudspeaker and he's saying, "Oh, try this spell." And you know, you can like hear the effects happening and you're like, "Are we should something be happening?" I know. I was like I was like they didn't really time this very well. Yeah. It's like there's not like a really it's like, "Oh, you're you're caught in the the venomous devil's snare." The, the devil snare. Yeah. yeah. And it's like I don't see any devil, devil snare. snare. That's weird. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it turned out though that the our cart had just literally stopped. Like yeah. I've I've had it happen like at Disney before. I think like Haunted Mansion might be slightly famous for it. Like maybe someone like is having a hard time getting on or off the Doom buggy. Yeah. And they'll like pause the ride for you know. 30 seconds or Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin is another one where occasionally like the whole ride will just stop and like really all that's happening is it's sort of like everything stops you can just sit there and just rack up points if you're on Buzz Lightyear yep and all is well and then you know it starts moving again and you just kind of like continue the ride and it's like oh yeah you know like like stuff happens this was not like that though this was this was like we were on the roller coaster like when it broke down yeah someone didn't like push a button to halt it to help someone else like this was not controlled by the staff. Yes, this was like yeah. something something went wrong. So the we're ride like ride broke. We're, we're sitting in there, and you know, I was like, <laughs> we're if you've never seen Hagrid's motorbike adventure or whatever, there's like the sidecar, uh, and then like the main like motorcycle, and you're like pretty aggressively, you know, strapped into it. So yeah. you can't really like move. You can't stand up. You can't do anything. Yeah. 
And we just proceed to sit there for 25 minutes. Oh my God. Just like inside of the Forbidden Forest, all the lights came on. Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, well, for one, I can now see like the total peak behind the curtain. That is the stuff that you don't see like when the lights are dimmed and everything. Yeah. Uh, so that was fascinating for one thing. I couldn't believe how much of the visual effects that you see are like literally just pipe and drape. Yeah, it's just like pipe and drape and how much the darkness just fills it in for you or how much like the mist is covering. But yeah, and you of course you're moving so fast anyway. Or even like I think when you go in there there's like a centaur sort of like staring down at you and the way like you're moving versus the way the fog and lights are bouncing off of him it sort of looks like he's like moving with you and it's like no don't be fooled it's a completely standstill statue that does not move <laughs> pure static pure static doesn't move at all yeah um but it's really cool that it's like it looks like it moves uh but yeah man we got stuck on that ride for yeah 25 30 minutes before it, that's like even before they just like finally someone arrives and is like, Hey, we're going to get you off the ride. I know that was the thing I couldn't believe yeah. is like it, like not only was it like broken down. So like I was starting to have like some real, like, like anxiety spirally type of thoughts where I was like, I was like, man, it is like shocking to me that we're in here and we've been sitting here for like quite a while now. And it was like, no one has even like come like no staff members like come and we we can see an exit like a, like an exit sign from yeah. where we're sitting. So like there is a hallway near near us. Um, and it's like, I was like, man, what is the only thing that could cause like no one to come and talk to, you know, the 30 people who are sitting on the ride, just like, <clears throat> like, like unable to move. And I was like, it has to be because someone got hurt. And I was like, I cannot, I cannot even begin to tell you how I would probably never ride a roller coaster again <laughs> if I discovered that while I was on the track, something happened. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, oh, no, nope, I can't do it. I can't yeah. do it. Uh, although that did, that did not end up happening. Everybody was fine. Just a, just a malfunction. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, they do finally come and get us off. And there's like this annoying level of like safety protocols they have to go through. Yes. Which is like, I understand that the liability for them is very high, but they like, they come out and they talk to you and they're like, we just have to go get like this little track bridge so that, you know, you guys can walk across the track safely. And it's like, I understand that you absolutely have to do that. Also, the gap is about two feet. So <laughs> right. like, I'm pretty sure we can all just step over the tracks. Yep. And of yep. course, they, they they legally cannot allow you to do that. But And also, they're just like, they don't like, you know, they're not going to release the seats until everything's perfectly set. So you're just like sitting there waiting for them to get this track bridge forever. Of course, it feels that way because, you know, your legs are starting to fall asleep because you can't move. Yep. Yep. But, it, uh, it, it, it definitely was. It was very interesting just to like watch the whole thing unfold. And so finally they come and they have like little like mobile stairs that you could use to like step off of the ride onto the ground and then go across the bridge that they've now like assembled like across the track so that you can like safely walk across those. And then, then they just proceed to like walk you out. And the thing that blew my mind the most is just how freaking huge the like space that this ride exists in is because in my head, I was like, Oh, this is kind of like a small coaster. And it's like, no, nope. this is like, I mean, it took us like probably, a, I don't know, five, 10 minutes just to like, walk back to the front of the queue right you know it was like man this was like a lengthy jaunt yeah you know it was for, a bit of a walk for just being on the sidewalk that exists for servicing the the roller the coaster itself um very unusual very unusual very unusual they did they did give us some like super express passes that then grant you access to the like uh, i guess if you didn't already have express passes uh, it would just let you into the express lane, but it would all, they also unlocked like the express lane for rides that quote unquote don't have express lanes. Yes. So Hagrid's or Velocicoaster. Like, I guess if you go and hand them this particular pass, they'll like open another chain and be like, actually you can walk right to the front. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> so good to know that that always exists. Good to know it does exist. Yes, yes, yes. So that was handy. We got two each, which I don't know if I feel like was perfectly enough compensation for myself. <laughs> Um, but whatever it, it did, we did have a very limited amount of time and we had spent a lot of time in line for this ride. I know that then we broke down and I we're know. stuck on for a while. I know. And then they're like, so don't worry, you'll have the pass so you can come back later. And I'm like, I don't want to come back and ride this ride at the <laughs> moment. Thank you very much. 
Uh, uh, but it was very cool up until that moment. It was, yeah, I will say the ride. Yeah, it was a very fun ride up until that point, and I would probably try it again despite our experience. But yeah, so we went, we got some food at the Three Broomsticks, and then we thought we'd go uh, see if Hagrid's uh, roller coaster was open or fixed yet. It was not, and at that point we were like, well, we pretty much got to start moving towards the exit. Um, so we actually used our pass on Velocicoaster to ride that for the second time of the day, which I have to say, Velocicoaster is awesome. It, it is hands down the best roller coaster I've ever been on. It is. It yeah, is. it's straight up unreal. But on yeah. top of that uh, was we got to go and we got to ride Velocicoaster where we were not in the last row. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we got we got off of that ride and we're like at this point in time we're literally just like beelining it to the exit to leave but go back to pamela and get our bags right but as we're like the after our ride the very next ride that was supposed to leave the next car uh they had to shut the ride down yeah and it was like no way no yeah like, like it I started was like, raining I can't, I can't even tell you how upset i would have been if that had happened yeah one ride sooner. one ride sooner like if we'd gotten next in line and they're like we're gonna have to shut the ride down due to inclement weather enjoy your day at universal i would have been like are you kidding me right now are <laughs> no. you there is no way that i just use my express pass to come up here and then get shut down i know that was, line? The, that was the thing i was like how do i get my express pass like, back i want need it back. that pass back please i yep. will be yeah uh, so, yeah, we, we got in just under the wire in that scenario. So that felt good. Like, woo, we just made it. That was awesome. Uh, and then we we made it. <coughs> we started beelining it towards the exit. And here was the weird situation because it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And Universal only stays open until, I think, 6? At least on the day mm. that we were there. It was on the day we six. were there. It was open until 6. And it had started raining fairly hard. So I think for a lot of people, they were like, yeah, it's time to just leave. It's like, yeah, it's, <coughs> it's sort of the end of the day. Sort of the it's end pouring. of the day. Yeah. It's pouring rain. We don't, we've done most of the things we wanted to do. So suddenly, even though Ben and I had to leave at this point, no matter what, sudden, like, the, the good thing about it was going to be that even though we had to leave early, that we'd have been leaving way earlier than most people. So there wouldn't have been like a big rush for Ubers or anything. Right. But because it started pouring at the same time we needed to leave, everyone started to leave at the exact same time. Meaning that the line for Ubers was actually going to be really long and suddenly like surge pricing is in effect. And you're just like, oh man, this is a bummer. So we went and talked to Pamela. We got our bags. We walked back to the Uber pickup thing. And unbelievably, like we get a like, we ran into someone we knew and they were like, oh yeah, my Uber is going to be like 20 minutes. And we were like, oh boy, that's going to be a real bummer. I know. Because we're not even, we haven't even requested a ride yet. <clears throat> right. Yeah. We're like, man, this is, <laughs> this is not great. And, and again, going back to the day before, like our three tenths of a mile trip that took us like 25 minutes to get. Yeah. You know, it was like, ah, yeah. man, we're not going to be, oh, we're going to miss our flight. We're, we're going to be stuck in Florida. Uh, no, just because this, this dumb Ah, the, because of the rain but unbelievably we go to request the ride and it's like four minutes later it's like wow that was convenient but then oh boy this is where we get on just the sketchiest uber experience of our life so we, we should probably be clear that it was not it technically ended up not being an uber I, ride that's true that altogether. was part of the sketchiness of it but i i swear to you guys f for like 40 minutes I thought that I was being taken. Dude, it like I, I'm right there. I was like, we're being abducted right now. This is what's happening. I this know. is a bad situation. Be prepared to tuck and roll and run. I know. Yeah. So um so we'll we'll just we'll just go through it. So I pull up Uber on my FM. I, I booked the trip. Uh like within just a few minutes, it's like, hey, your driver's here. And then promptly the driver calls me. And so we're we're going from Universal to Orlando Sanford Airport, which is like a 45 minute drive. Uh so it's like it's a pretty substantial uber fare honestly and there was right. massive surge pricing because everybody was now leaving at the right. same time so of course we we're we we're completely victim to it we cannot wait it out because the flight is going to leave oh, yes and, it, yeah. and we have no other way to <laughs> yeah we to don't get have, there right. so it's like a 150 dollar uber it was just right. like oh my gosh this Ugh. is going to be ridiculous so the immediately the guy calls me and so the you know huge myriad of like people kind of like milling around me because everybody's trying to leave the parks and everything mm -hmm. like very loud and he's like hey the destination isn't showing up on uh on my side of the app and neither is the trip amount and so he's like how much how much is it supposed to cost and i was like this is a really odd question like like i was like 
I don't know. I mean, I was, I was like, yeah, we're going to the airport and it's $150. And so, you know, it's like one of those things where I'm like, I really, really don't think I should have to like explain that. Like you were able to get my phone <clears throat> number right. from the app. Surely it's showing you the rest of it. But right. I'm also like, there's a lot going on, you know, like a bunch of right. signals. Like my mind's <clears throat> trying to like rationalize like how this could just be legit. So he's like, okay, well I'm in the blue section and I'm like, look over and there's a huge sign that says don't park in the blue section. And it was like, all right, well, great. Well, right. he's in the blue section. So Jay and I grab our bags. We say goodbye to our friend and we're like walking in the general direction of this guy who is like, he, then he like texts me. He's like, I'm in a white t-shirt and I'm like, shouldn't you just say I'm in like a silver RAV four, you know, like, right. Like, I don't know. So and then he comes like walking at me, you know, he's like, he's been at like his, his car's been parked. He's been out of his car and he's like walking up to me like immediately, like before I'm even like 30 yards right. from the vehicle. And we're like, like the, to walk from the red section, which is the actual like um, ride share pickup location designated by universal over to the blue section. You were immediately now, isolated from everybody yes like you were completely there's no one else around all of a sudden right there's just yeah. like three random cars parked on this like one side of the parking lot like <coughs> away from it all right like all like, who look like they've like lost their way yeah or whatever right and so you're like okay like what's what's going on so he walks up to me he's like hey my like you know uber they're they're taking like a lot of the money so like would you be willing to just like venmo me or would you be willing to just pay me for like the trip and I'll just give you like a $20 discount. And so it's kind of like, uh, I, it's like one of these situations where I'm like, man, I'm in a hurry. It is raining. And we're, we've now like walked kind of far away from like, you know, where we were. Right. Um, and you know, so I'm just like, okay, like, I guess that's fine. Can I Venmo you? And he's like, and he's like, yes, of course. Like that's, that's no problem. And he's like, I'm over here. So like we walk over and we're like loading the bags into like the back of this car. And then he like just walks up to one of the other three cars yeah. that are just sitting there. And like all the guys have like, sort of like the three drivers have kind of like converged and are like talking and stuff. And it's like, are they all like together? Right. Or is this just sort of like, like part of like, like if you're like an Uber driver, like you're all sort of part of like a, like a enough of a um, community that maybe <clears throat> you just go and like intermingle or ask questions or whatever. But what he's done is he's gone over and he's, he's basically asked the question. Like, I don't know how to accept a Venmo payment. Can one of you like set it up on my phone really fast? Right. So he comes back. I Venmo him the money. Um, at which point, like I'm like, very much questioning whether or not oh, I've I made know. the right choice at all. Cause I'm like, now I'm not even protected by like the bylaws of Uber. Right. You know, it's like when you're driving for Uber, like I get to rate you the driver on how it goes. Like, yeah. And, and likewise, it's just you know, like, like, Oh, I don't, I don't know about this. And then we get in the car and you know, that, that even that felt just like, I don't know. Cause it's like, uh, then he get, like he's like turning around and immediately being like you have to close the Uber app, close the Uber app, right? Like, and, which is just like I thought your Uber app wasn't working first of all, and it sounds like it was, and, and it also <laughs> sounds like it knows how to like, detect you doing exactly what you're doing, right? Which was essentially using Uber to get the get the trip and then bypassing it and taking the money. Yeah, on his own. Yeah, it's exactly what it was. Basically, it what it I mean immediately felt like it was doing was like yeah, using Uber to be in the right spot to pick someone up, offering them a slight discount, and then taking a full amount of the money rather than Uber taking some of the money. Right, which absolutely is illegal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and then it just uh, it it really it was like okay, but now not only one, but if you're not in the Uber app, now you're not even like on the grid for like Uber or anything. You're not even being like tracked by the app or right. something. Now you're just in a stranger's car. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Which, which is the strangest <clears throat> thing because I remember when Uber was first like introduced as a product and I was like, I don't think people are going to be comfortable just getting inside of someone's car. Like when you get into like a taxi cab, it's like, this is a very like established industry right you know it's like it's like they're uh, they're like companies these are like professional drivers and and as time has obviously gone on and i've gotten to know uber i use it all the time and i have no qualms about it whatsoever and i was even thinking about it on this trip i was like it's so weird how i used to like be nervous that this would be a thing and there i am being like oh man i am like i don't think i realized how much i depended on just uber as like the program or lyft or, or whatever as like this like governing body yeah. over the circumstances of being in someone else's vehicle. Right. And it was sort of like, 
Uh oh. And so promptly the guy pulls out of the parking lot and immediately. So he pulled up the GPS on his own phone. So he's just running it like on, you know, Google maps or whatever to go yeah. to the airport immediately deviates from how the GPS is telling him to get there. Right. And in the process, he starts talking like, super negatively about the company of Uber right. to where he's like picked up his phone off of the thing. So at this point in time, he's literally like holding his phone while driving like us in the car and talking to us in the back seat. And he's opened like, like a stock trading app. And he's like, see, look at Uber's prices through the roof. And you know, and he's, he's like, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is like definitely like someone who might be a bit disgruntled with, you know, yeah, the, the, the corporate entity that is, is that has brought all three of us here. Right. Yeah. And it's just like the fact that he's holding the phone also means that like you no longer can like even just look from the back seat to see that you are indeed following the route yes. or anything. Not that you ever have any reason to like not just trust that they're following the route. But now suddenly I do. I'm like, and he's, yeah, you're right. Immediately was just like, no, how do they have me going? Wait, no, I'm going to go this way. I like, like, you know, out trying to outthink the GPS or like, I'm going to take the toll road or whatever. And it's just like, just do what they say, man. Just follow the map. Just follow the map. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need, I don't need you making up uh, the way to the airport. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. You it's know? Like, if it takes longer, it takes longer. It takes longer, there whatever. Go. Just, yeah, I don't, I don't need you like being like, trust me, I know the way. Like, I do not, because I do not trust you at this point. No, like, I, you are clearly sketching a little bit. <laughs> yes. And so that's the thing. So yeah, like that's, that is the idea to get into your mind. It's like, you're now officially in a stranger's car who is officially not following the directions to the location that you agreed upon going to. And it was like, Oh no. Oh no. Like what is, and so like, I literally, I'm like texting Alice and she has like my location shared. And I was like, Hey, watch my location for like the next hour. Because like, we are in a situation right now that doesn't feel comfortable. Uh, yeah. I pull up the GPS on my phone. Uh, so did I. I was like, I'm going to just punch in the coordinates myself and make sure that we are not missing where we're going. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Making and sure like if we take any weird turns that I know about it. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, the good thing was that pretty much once you were on the interstate, that was pretty much the only turn you take. It's just right. Like, get on the interstate, then you get there. stay on the interstate, get off the interstate or get off the interstate and you're at the airport. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm like sitting there and I'm like literally I typed out like a message to Jay and I was like straight up if he takes a turn away like I am fully okay leaving our suitcases in the back of this vehicle and just like yeah like getting out anything and, valuable in there right I was like yeah. I am like I, and, but, but the thing is is that like it, it's it all sounds so like like to re, like even like retell the story it almost feels like it's like oh, you know, like, like maybe like maybe being like a tad dramatic or something but it's like. I didn't feel that way in the moment. I oh, was like, I certainly didn't feel that way in the moment because, yeah, it was like not like he, not only w were we no longer like under like an actual Uber ride, but like he was asking tons of questions about like, you know, what we do, which, you know, you're trying to just like make regular conversation because if it turns out he's just like a regular guy and this is exactly like, like if all the circumstances are actually unfolding the way he said they unfolded, then, you you know. Um, then you're just having a nice conversation, but otherwise it just like all of the, everything felt so like, so unusual. It's like, yeah, well, you know, we do like YouTube and it's like, even as you're saying it, you're like that, does that sound like we make a ton of money or something? Like, do we suddenly sound like really valuable people to have in your <laughs> car or like, and he's like asking like, how do you make money on that? And he's like, I mean, talking about money a lot, yeah. which was very uncomfortable. And then talking about like how, like, I don't know, like he grew up in an area with lots of crime and stuff. And it was like, yeah, I, and I just, mm, mm -hmm, yeah, I know mm -hmm. it's like, Ah oh, man, what's going on? What's I going know. on? What's going on? And you're like, we're like 30 minutes into the road. We're like very close to the airport at one point. Like, and I like everything's like, okay, it does seem like we're going to the airport, but then we're like, you know, you can see like the final exit where you'd get off at the airport and we're like three lanes over Yeah, and me and you were both just like, all right, we need to get over. Yeah. I mean, and that was, yeah. Like <laughs> I was trying not to backseat drive and, and like with my friends, I would never do that or anything, but I'm like, Hey, we need to turn. We need to turn. Hey, we need to turn. We need to turn. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're there. So I don't know. We finally got through it. Everything ended up being fine. The guy just took us to the airport and we got out and all like it was, I, I think probably on the whole, what it was, was somebody who was just trying to do a little bit better than like what the Uber app was offering and just also happened to be like a kind of quirky dude. I think that I think that I have no doubt that he was absolutely 
running a bit of a scam. It's just that the people being scammed were Uber, Uber, not us. Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that, that is, that is ultimately, I think what was, what was going down with it, but it was just, it was so, I couldn't, I couldn't believe how nervous it made me and how fast. I mean, cause I was, I was like really shaking in my boots. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you. I was just like, this is, a, I, I was like staring at like the estimated arrival time the entire time. Like, man, we are like, just, just get there. Like, just get out of the car. Like, let's, uh, we made it. We made it. We made it to the airport where then <laughs> the, our, our troubles, thankfully, were for the most part uh, over. We finally did TSA pre-check. We did. But it turns out that when the tickets were purchased, they like the known traveler number was not included. So then we still had to go to the table to be like, can you add the pre-check on here? Yeah. Which, then it turned out we also hadn't had uh, b- bags yeah, paid for. Yeah, we didn't have bags paid for. So, so they're like, you have to check your bag. <laughs> now. It was like, like, okay, great. And then it like, I was like, you know what? It's okay. It was okay that we had to stand in this line because now we won't have to stand at the security line, which just by happenstance, there was no one. We, there was no one. You know, we could we would have breezed through security either way. So it was like, man, we weren't supposed to have to wait in any lines. And now we had to we had to wait in line to get the pre-check to not wait in line. And then there wasn't a line. That, that was all. I mean, that's all very minor. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Either way, it just just it was it was a very unusual. It's so such a day. Like, yeah, so let me look, cause let me ask this, because we've talked about like manifesting and stuff before but uh my wife alice is like whenever like mercury is in like is in retrograde oh, mercury is in retrograde yeah. it's, it's like one of these things where i feel like she'll she'll bring it up and it's like like inevitably stuff always does happen during this period of time and during this trip this was also true and so i'm like i'm sitting there trying to be like i am a skeptic by nature right. however <laughs> it's like there's a part of me it's like a lot I'm, is adding I'm up. I'm having a weird day. A lot is adding up. I'm having a weird day. It's storming outside and I'm about to get on a plane. All right. All good. All is Everything's good. fine. Let me tell you, you know what? It was cold on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> you had a sweatshirt. I was like, uh, mine was in my now checked bag. <laughs> 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 but it, that wasn't really that big a deal. I was, it was fine. We made it home. We made it home. Yeah. Yeah. We got home. Okay. And the flight went fine. We, we we're, we're all safe. We're all safe. Yeah. So anyway, hey Ben, can hey. I read you some numbers? Hey, how about that? Hey, here's some numbers for you. Are you are you ready for these numbers? Yeah. Let's, all let's right. Hear them. Eleven, seventy six, one hundred and six, six d four, thirty two, <laughs> and of course ninety nine. Nice yeah. transition. All right, Ben. Let's have. I feel like that was kind of an intense little story we had there. Do you um? Do you want to do some like Wicks of the Peak maybe? We could we could most certainly we could most certainly do that. Okay. Uh, well, because my I just finally finished after like months and months and months and months and months. I have no idea why it took me so long to finish this book because I loved it. Mm. Uh, you recommended it many many months ago, uh, probably when I started reading it. It was <laughs> Project Hail Mary, uh, which is an amazing audio book yes. uh, and also written by the same author who wrote The Martian. Yeah, Andy uh, Weir. Andy Weir. Yeah. Uh, which is also another one of my just favorite all time audio books and this book is straight up fascinating if you have not read it i absolutely recommend reading it i have like conversation topics that i want to talk about about the book but like i also feel like those would come with inherent spoilers oh for sure and so it's like i don't want like i was so glad that nobody had really damaged any part of the story for me yes yes and so i was like oh this is i mean it's it is just so interesting and unusual and like fun and odd and scientific and spacey um i also feel like i I better understand time dilation for the first time ever (laughs) um i don't think i could explain it to you but i do think i understand it Ah, um right which is like a very odd uh, like space ism type thing it's also a very confusing concept just on the whole so um I would recommend Project Hail Mary, but more importantly, I want to ask you about your Wick of the Peak, which is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So um, me, uh, after uh, after we got home, the good thing was we arrived home on Friday, which meant we then immediately had the weekend. So nice. Which was very nice. Very, very nice. Like I woke up the next morning, was like, time to go to work. And I was like, wait, never mind. It's It's the weekend. Full weekend mode. Full weekend. It was very fun. It was a very good weekend. but so uh, Sunday rolled around, didn't really have anything to do. And uh, one of the movies I had, uh, or a couple weeks ago, 
um, we did a uh, a movie night at my house, or I guess it was more of like a, a movie breakfast or something. Beth yeah. was out running, and Luke was like, "Can we have movie night?" And we just made like popcorn, which the kids spilled everywhere. But we watched Sonic the Hedgehog one, nice, and Sonic the Hedgehog two was coming out, and I was like, "And uh, we, me and Luke, had not been back to the movie since we saw Paw Patrol, his first movie ever, nice." Which, um, and I was like, "You know what? Maybe Sonic the Hedgehog two would be a great." second movie to go to because one of the other things that is i feel like i feel like when we were kids there were tons of kids movies in theaters like all the time yeah it feels like i'm having to like really wait for the next kids movies to come out to even like have this option i i wonder Mm -hmm. if that was more the case when we were kids but like from your perspective as a child you're not getting like so much of the planning phase of when you go to the movie theater. That's true. So it's just sort of like, Hey, we're going to the movies this weekend. It's like, no way. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, it's fun and exciting and awesome. And you get to go and get popcorn and candy and yes, all the rest of the stuff. Um, but that, that is, that's interesting. Cause I, mean, I feel like Disney is just rolling out movies left and right. Yeah. Yeah. You'd think, do you think there'd be more to see? Yeah. But anyway, the number one kids movie that we could go see was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which I was pretty excited, honestly, to go see. Cause I liked the first one. Uh, That was one of those movies I watched like in the middle of the night when I had to wake up all the time to feed Nick and Nate to like feed them. Yeah. It's like I remember I watched the first half during feeding number one and the second half during feeding number two. Nice. And yeah, I remember thinking like, boy, that movie was a lot better than it had any right to be. That was, I mean, first of all, you should see Sonic. If you haven't seen Sonic the Hedgehog one, you should see it just for Jim Carrey because he is he is putting in a performance and it is very fun. It does. He does feel like you're getting Jim Carrey in in like back in that essence of like what maybe you knew him as yeah. as a child, which yeah. is just this like wacky, goofy, fun. Yeah, and I mean, he is just a fantastic Doctor Robotnik. It is it is hilarious. Um, but I would say, you know what? My opinion about Sonic 2 was exactly the same as Sonic 1, which was just like, boy, this this was a lot better than I think it definitely needed to be. And it was very enjoyable. I very much liked it. Um, they got, you know, you get Knuckles and Tails in there, which is very fun. It felt like they're going to mess up Knuckles and Tails and there's, like they're going to they're going to they're going to ruin it. It's not going to be as good, but it was. They totally nailed it. You have um, Idris Elba playing Knuckles. He's very fun. He has kind of like the Captain Holt kind of character where it's like he's just serious all the time. Yeah. But then yeah. <laughs> like Sonic is just not. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. OK. Gotcha, um, gotcha. So they like, you know, eventually towards the end, he sort of just like like starts learning how to have fun in things. And that's very funny to watch him do. OK. Um, so I thought I thought that was very good. I would totally recommend going. See, it was really fun going with Luke as well. Like he was engrossed the entire time. Uh, weirdly, when we saw Paw Patrol there, there has been he he remembers things so much sometimes it is like hilarious to be the stuff he remembers but uh we got sour patch kids that time because he pointed at the thing he said i want that and i he was exactly pointing at sour patch kids but according to him he wanted m&ms and he has reminded me so many times the next time we go to the movies i want m&ms and that's what i pointed at and i was like okay okay <laughs> we got there this time I was like do you want the m&ms and he's looking at all the candy and, she, and once again he picked sour patch Kids. I swear to you, this morning we got to the gym and you were telling me about this exact thing, and you're yeah. like, "Yeah, we got to our patch kids," and I was like, "Jay." No, <laughs> I know. Come on, I, man. And not only that, it wasn't even sour patch kids. It was sour patch like watermelons. Okay, and I was like, "Okay, are you sure you want this one and not the regular?" This is just going to be watermelons, not even sour patch kids. And I was like, "Also, are you sure you don't want M and M's?" And I mean, he just he looked at that box and he thought about it like really hard. He's like. This is what I want. <laughs> like, okay. That is amazing. Fantastic. Do you think any part of him was like, I've made such a big deal out of this, like, but here we are. No. And those watermelons sure do look good. I, I don't think he was like, I've made such a big deal about it. I think just in the moment he was like, this is a serious decision. And let me really consider it. Okay. Yeah, the water, the watermelons. No, it's just, the I'm in. I'm, I'm in. in on watermelons. Uh, yeah. That uh, we got like the big bucket of popcorn. I got a big like uh, Sierra mist because... <laughs> Uh, Regal doesn't sell Coke products anymore. It's embarrassing. Man, I can't even imagine. I cannot tell you the difference. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's em- can you, let me can tell you, you something, imagine can owning... You, look, a movie theater and not selling Coke products? Like, I, it is, it, like... Whew, look, 
Look, it's a scandal. It's, it is a scandal, Ben. The movies and Coke go together. Okay, I don't care if I'm. That, I know that's the the branding they want you to subscribe to. And guess what? I do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? What's weird is you think I'm just being like some sort of like Coke fanboy over here versus Pepsi, which is cause like I don't I don't drink soda that much. I was gonna ever, say yeah, you're not like a big soda drinker. I'm not like a big soda drinker. But like I kid you not. Every single person that I have gone to the Regal uh, Valley View 10 at um, since they made the switch from Coke to Pepsi has been visibly offended that they are selling Pepsi and not Coke products. Wow. Like out loud. Like when I told Beth, she was just like, she was like, what are you like? Are you kidding me? Like, and that not only that, Ben. Not only are they not selling Coke products, oh, gosh, but they have else? the audacity to not even be selling Cherry Pepsi. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I know. <laughs> it is. Wow. Am, uh, it is it, a real low point. It sounds like it's for time Regal. for us to officially open Carlin Brothers Cinemas. Ben, I owning a movie, th- like a luxury movie theater is a very fun idea in my brain that I'm not totally opposed to. It sounds like probably a lot of work, but also it's something I would be very proud of because I really like going to the movies, and it sounds like a lot of fun. That's Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. This yeah. is good to know. This is okay. good to know. I feel like when it comes to my constant like uh, flow of ideas and projects that I want to start, yeah. it's like what maybe what we really need to do is like I'll just stop uh announcing any of them at all and you'll just tell me things that you are okay with mm-hmm. and i'll just find a way to be cool with that right you know because you'd be yeah. like oh, i could be excited about a movie theater yeah, movie I theater. Know, i can make this fun luxury movie theater i mean be fantastic how do you how do you make a movie theater fun i mean like, I seriously, mean, you yeah know? i mean th- that's the First, thing step you number already- one get rid of pepsi <laughs> get ri- that let me tell you let me when we're when we're discussing pouring rights ben it's coca cola <laughs> at our theater or nothing or nothing <laughs> or our own homegrown coca cola right. plants that's right the only drink you drink in the movies <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right uh, we, we i imagine perfectly. there's probably libations at like a at like a um luxury movie theater as uh, well. yeah, yeah yeah you know if you want like wine or beer i imagine i imagine wait staff as well you know like to come but, and like you know do the thing yeah it come. would be kind of cool if there were um if you had like numbered chairs right and yeah. then behind the number chairs or like like let's say like where we're sitting right now we have like a little like end table next yeah. to us if there was a way that like you could actually send the food through like a like a portal oh underneath so that like while you're sitting there and nobody has to like walk in front of anybody just all of a sudden like your food emerges like to the left of you and it's like hey chicken tenders well, well that's a little fancy Which, by i way, suppose if have- it's like luxury though it's not even, you might have few enough seats that the idea of walking like in front of people might not even be possible well i suppose i suppose but you i know. just like the i like the opportunity or ability <laughs> for food to just magically to just arrive up, up here yeah yeah and it feels like so i actually had the idea because when we were at universal you could like put your stuff in a locker and then yeah. i was like well where are we supposed to get our stuff back because this mm. is on this side of the line and yeah. we're going to leave on that side right and so how will we have access like is everybody like moving our stuff and no the answer was just that literally it was there were lockers that you could open from, from both two sides. sides yeah and i was like oh that's that's cool that's fun. okay so, so so imagine what I'm hearing is yes beneath where you're sitting is kind of like an open stair step area that like in the console like the 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 worker can like unlock the back of it put in your soda press a button a little light pops up you open it on your side whoop soda whoop soda whoop soda fantastic just, just like that coke to be specific <laughs> yes yeah, yeah yeah but so like i mean how cool would that be though? that would be very cool that'd be very cool i'm also imagining some sort of like conveyor belt or something that like maybe you could like they could like put the soda in on the side and then it'll just sort of like and like bring it down to you yeah absolutely something like that why not who's to say who's to say why not why not why not you know because maybe you ordered wine for your theater experience it seems it seems likely if not plausible yeah exactly exactly gotta have like big comfy seats obviously obviously gotta have that so yeah these are things that would go into our do you know do you, how would you do like do you i mean you gotta have popcorn obviously but would you do like how would you up the popcorn game mm, okay <clears throat> I feel like there are different kinds. Not I feel like I, there are different kinds mm. of, of popping corn, corn kernels. Yeah. And I feel like not enough places 
are using the ones that I'm picturing in my head, but I don't know the technical term for. Okay. So I'm imagining like the ones that we have, for example, in our popcorn machine are almost more like clover shaped, if you will. Oh, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm thinking about the ones that are almost more like if you were to take a scoop of, of ice cream, you know, from like you like you take your scoop. This you, so f- from a fresh traditional pop like microwave popcorn pops in what's like called a butterfly pattern. Okay, butterfly pattern, just yeah. like saying shamrock. Whereas if you yeah, if you um go out to like some guy on the street with like a big kettle, yeah, then those guys are typically popping um uh, corn that pops in a mushroom pattern. <gasps> okay, I want mushroom. Yeah, for sure. Dibs you know mushroom. what? You know what? I'm thinking we probably just need a guy with a big kettle out in the lobby doing his thing. Oh, absolutely. Like wearing Freaking the coveralls and doing yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like uh, yes. Fresh popped kettle corn. On the ready. On the red. Yeah. Yeah. No, I okay. think that that's a great that's idea okay. because then it adds like a like a degree of like you know festivity to the occasion. Yeah. You know because it's like you get to go, you get to see the stuff happening. Which I mean, I've said this before about um, Honey Dukes at at Universal. As yeah. long as we're talking about this again, mm-hmm. um, is the <clears throat> fact that like when you go and you and I once upon a time did a taste test of every single candy that they sell at honeydukes right and i think that like across the board we really did not like most of the candy because it's just either like a solid brick of like okay-ish milk chocolate Mm -hmm. or it's just an otherwise like like standard kind of cheap candy product that's been like packaged into something to like you know wizarding worldify it like yeah like take the chocolate frogs for example they come in a beautiful box and like as far as i'm concerned i would buy the box and the contents more for like a beautiful paperweight right. than I would for the chocolatey contents inside. Right. Which um, yeah, because the actual chocolate frog is not very good. No, it's not. But like I've always thought, like if you've ever seen them stretching like saltwater taffy, yeah, they, they've got these like gyrating like arms that sort of like will slowly like pull it. Yeah, it's very mesmerizing. It's really cool looking. Yeah, and it's like I feel like those are the kinds of things that would, if as long as you're gonna sell candy that is still just candy, you could have like the visual medium that like kind of offers that like, whoa, that's like is, whimsy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I've seen it, um, through social medias before. Uh, but there's a, there's, I think a place in Canada maybe, or maybe it's just somewhere in like, like middle East, not middle East. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Um, like middle of the country, Northern area, that, that scope of the United States, uh, I think it's called Logan's Candy Company. And they do the thing where they have like a heated like granite surface and they'll like whip about all the all like the hard candies yeah. and all the candy canes and it's all beautiful and neat and cool and stuff. I've always felt like Honey Duke should just be doing all this type of stuff. Or right, like yeah. pouring hot fudge in front of you or something, you know, like give give something to look at. Yeah. And so all that to say, I feel like the more of that that we can incorporate into our theater, the better. The better. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. Like, you know, like bring bring the factory to the people so bring they can the see the how their how their corn's being popped. Right. And nothing like a giant like copper kettle, you know, to like get people excited about being at the movie theater. Exactly. I'm feeling, you know, just on this note, we should probably I want like like uh, a, f- a visible barrel that like the wine comes out of. Oh, you know, right? great idea. Right. A visible barrel. Visible. Every, you know who, what, you know what no one hates is a barrel. Nobody hates a barrel. Nobody hates a barrel. How could anybody hate a barrel? Yeah. So maybe, okay. I, I mean, I'm not sure if like this is even where my mind immediately went, but mm-hmm. I'm almost feeling like the vibe of our movie theater is kind of like stepping into like a Renaissance fair. A renaissance fair. A renaissance yeah, except fair. that you're going to go see a, a movie. A movie in, in yeah. like a totally like plush, really comfortable seat with like a little portal to your snacks. Right. You know? Maybe snack portal. A snack yeah. portal. <laughs> but like it seems like the 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 otherwise vibe that you could have is almost like very um I don't even know what the right word is for it. But like if you're gonna have all these like artisanal, you know, delicious mm-hmm. snacks being being available. I almost even imagine like when you go to a brewery and there's like all the brew houses, which are like the big silver, like stainless steel silos, something like those, but maybe they're like hammered copper Mm -hmm. that like all the beer comes out of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I sounds like, like a really fun place to see a movie. I know. I feel like yeah. people might walk in and be like, I don't even need to go see a movie. I'm just, movie. I'm enjoying myself in the lobby. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. You know what though? Cause a lot of movies have like really crummy arcade games out in the lobby. Right. We would need some sort of like cool, like brick and mortar kind of 
like games, I think. When you say brick and mortar, do you mean like like more like analog y? Yeah, I mean like sort of like analog games. Okay. Okay. You know? Like have you ever been like in I'm sure you have, like you're like again, like in a brewery or something where they have like the the ring on a big string and there's like a hook or something. Yeah. You sort of do it. Yeah. You just need like stuff like that style of game just available not that anyone has to pay for it either that's just there as part of the experience of being there right it's like oh yeah boom this is just fun to be here let me ask a query real fast okay. so you know the game at carnivals and such where you take a large comically sized mallet and you strike like a platform and then like a little ball shoots up in the mm. air and i built one out of legos this weekend did you really i did well how about that yeah. i didn't know that that's exciting um but anyway i've always felt like carnival games are typically some way shape or form like rigged a total scam. or gamed yeah. or or whatever yeah but like i do feel like it would just be fun to go and find like the strongest person that you can find you know like and and like literally build one and just like have like a linebacker for like you know an NFL team or something set the bar as to like what the hardest hour version of it will take right and then like from there it's just it just literally is perfectly scaled and right. so it's just like it's like if you if you are like super strong or can like you know swing the mallet like extremely well or something it's like then you will then you free will just, popcorn then you'll just hit the thing right up top but otherwise like it's I always feel like it would be such a fun game to just go and like with your buddies and like see who can get it to go the highest right you know like and that's it that's, that's it. it you know yeah if you ring the bell you get a free popcorn yeah from our kettle fantastic yeah exactly exactly and we'll always know because it'll you know it'll ding right it'll be loud. They sound like fun things. It sounds like a really cool movie theater. That's all I'm saying. How do we start? I don't know exactly. Mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know what? We start just by talking about it. You know, if it's you, know, we've basically already started. <laughs> we have already started. We have already started. What, what is a good play on? On um, um, like how? Yeah. How can we? Okay. Okay. Like the fairgrounds. I'm trying to think of like like what I would call it. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. I don't know. It feels like Carnival and Carlin kind of are pretty close to each other in some way. Like Carnival, the Carna film or something. That's nah, not good. No, I don't mm. know. I don't know. It's a the name needs some work for sure. There's certainly something there though. Yeah, it's like it's. I feel like it's it exists in the ether around us. Yeah, and we it's just, just waiting to be discovered. Exactly. Really, it it has always been. It, right. it just needs to have been found. It's like the name of the wind. It is like the name of the wind. Yes. Bingo. Way to get that snuck in there <laughs> right at the end. That's amazing. Right at the end. Oh, my gosh, oh. you guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of The Pop and for listening to our uh, merc- Mercury in retrograde uh, filled journey Trip to, to Universal Studios <laughs> and just sort of Orlando in general. Yep. I feel like we <laughs> we had a, a very fast for what it's worth. I feel like we talked a lot about like some shenanigans that we got into and such. I had a great time. The trip was really fun. Annual Pass was an awesome show to work with at the show. The audience at the show was really awesome. You guys got really into it. And I would I thought it was a really great like test run, if nothing else, for like could like something we could do for a live show in the future, which I think we totally could. Definitely at our movie theater. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> we have a venue. We have a venue. It's like when we're not showing movies, we just do trivia in there. <laughs> exactly. Huge stage, big screen. It's all it's all coming up. Yeah. Um, if we host even a single concert there, then we could we could then we could presently work at a concert venue again. <laughs> oh my gosh, the, the dream has resurfaced. I don't know if that's the dream, but we could say it. That's true. That's yeah. true. Okay, guys. Uh, but yeah, otherwise we have uh, some exciting things happening over on the Patreon page right now. Uh, at the uh, just at the five dollar tier, you will gain access to our Discord server, where we are getting ready to launch a step competition Boom. for the month of June. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where Jay and I and all of the other Discordians out there are going to be participating in a great big step off, uh, which is really, I think, going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you can link pretty much every single like activity tracker whether it's like your just your basic smartphone uh to like a fitbit an apple watch or you know whatever device that you may have that tracks your steps throughout the day that will then drop them into like the app where we can all see how we're doing against each other so it's like a big fun go get active 
hooting and hollering good time. Yeah. Um, so that, that's going to be available uh, at our Discord server at the $5 tier. Uh, and then additionally, at the exclusive merch tier, we currently have the window open for the moleskin notebooks, which are going to be the large format moleskin notebooks that are going to be black with a gold popcorn culture stamp right in the middle. And in also in gold will be your name printed into uh the front cover of the book oh yeah they're going to gonna look good they're gonna look really good absolutely beautiful if you've never had a moleskin notebook before you will probably never go back um hardcover as well patreon.com slash popcorn culture uh otherwise guys until next time pop pop